What's going on everybody out there watching this? If you're watching on YouTube or on Twitter, thank you for watching. I really appreciate it. Without any of you guys watching any of my videos, well, if I had zero views on a lot of videos, I would stop doing them. So, this is my NXT Orlando. I'll call it my NXT Orlando review because they left Full Sail University and they got out of there. For finally, they went on the on they didn't go on the road because Orlando is the same place. But they went to a bigger arena in Orlando, probably probably had over 5,000 people there or maybe even more. I don't know the attendance, but it was a pretty decent size arena. Anyways, so this is my NXT Orlando review. The show kicked off with showing the crowd, showing the setup. It looked great. The arena made NXT, made the look of the show look great. That they got out of Full Sail. Full Sail only holds, I heard... That Full Sail only holds 400 people. Uh, I thought it was a little more, but I guess not. Still holds 400 people. Those fans can get very loud and rowdy. So it was good they went to a bigger arena that had more than 400. Because NXT can draw a sellout of 15, 20,000 if they wanted. When I went to NXT Live... Four weeks ago, there was a. I thought there were more people there and more seats, but there were sellout of 750 people. It felt like, and it looked like maybe a thousand, but whatever. It was 750. It was a sellout. And the building was. It was a a ballroom, like a ballroom hall. It was a pretty decent size. So, on to the show now. NXT Orlando kicked off with, I believe, some hype. They showed a still screen of Bailey and Carmella that they were having their championship match tonight. The NXT Women's Championship was on the line for once on NXT. Not saying it has to be on the line a lot every week because it should not, and it doesn't. So, here we go. First matchup was Baron Corbin coming out. Got a decent reaction. Got a lot of booze also. And he, this guy comes out next. Johnny Wrestling. Johnny Grotto. He comes out next. He comes out, gets a great reaction. Fans love him. So it's Johnny Wrestling against Corbin kicking things off. Corbin wins... Most of the match, he was getting beat down. And he escaped the ring, ran back in. Johnny Wrestling followed him, ran in behind him. Corbin grabbed him, hit the end of days. One, two, three, it was over. Once that end of days is hit, it's probably going to be over. Baron Corbin wins. Good kickoff to the show. Great kickoff. The crowd was really into it. Basically because they're out of Full Sail and Full Sail is uh, pretty spoiled. They've gotten spoiled and I believe NXT needs to go on the road more. Because they'll get better reactions. Even though Full Sail, the fans there that show up for the tapings are still pretty good fans. And they give the feel of every show pretty good reactions. And they're not a dead crowd for most of the shows at Full Sail, but out of Full Sail, a lot of crowds in bigger arenas and other cities and states will be way more hype to see NXT. Because I believe Full Sail, the crowd that shows up there, the same people all the time, it's getting a little stale. And Triple H and NXT maybe... After NXT Dallas, they should think about going on the road every single month and taping their shows on the road every month. 
so they could do like three or four tapings in one in a different city every month. And then they could run that on the WWE Network for an entire month of tapings in a new city. So, after Corbin wins against Johnny Wrestling, we had um, the Vaude Villains. They showed a video of the Vaude Villains hyping them up because they're heels now. I don't see them getting the tag titles back, but didn't doesn't really matter. It's still a pretty cool video. Up uh, next, we had the uh, video and picture shown of the Sami Zayn and Samoa Joe controversy in their match when Corbin tapped out when they both had submission moves locked on them. So they showed that and said next week they're talking about next week. It's Sami Zayn versus Samoa Joe. Winner is the new number one contender. And I really believe this is not a spoiler. I don't read the NXT spoilers because I want to be surprised every Wednesday when I watch it. But I believe Samoa Joe will beat Sami Zayn and challenge Finn Balor at NXT Dallas TakeOver. So up next we had a Sami Zayn interview. He talked about Joe and the match next week. I'm sure that will be the main event of the show. This was a very fun show to watch because the crowd and because the matches, the talent was really into it and the crowd was really into it. And next week it's going to be another good show because the main event is Sami Zayn versus Joe. Up next, after the Sami Zayn interview, we had... The Hype Bros come out. Zack Ryder and Mojo Rawlings. The Hype Bros come out. Face a really mid, not even mid card. Just two job guys. Two enhancement wrestlers. I don't know if they're training at the Performance Center. I don't really care if they are. Anyways, Hype Bros, it was expected they win. It was expected. No surprise there. The Hype Bros get the win. Zack Ryder hit a move that they call the Hype Rider. So Zack Ryder hits the Hype Rider. That was great seat. Hype Bros win. Hype, uh, Hype Rider was hit. Quit talking! Oh, good lord. These people, I'm telling you, that I live with... They don't listen when I tell them to not talk. Anyways, back to the, my NXT review. Hype Bros win with the Hype Rider that Zack Ryder hit on these two jobbers. I don't know, remember their names, the job guys, and I don't really care what their names are. I don't think there'll be anything in NXT anyways. Up next, after the Hype Bros win, we get... Baymella interview Bailey and Carmella together backstage having an interview. Carmella says basically if she loses, she will still be best friends with Bailey. And she won't be upset, but she really wants to be NXT Women's Champion. Basically, that's what she said. Then up next, after ba Bailey and Carmella's interview, we had a Divas match. Or NXT women's match on the show. The second one of the, or the first one of the show. And there would be a second one. For, for the main event. You all know that. Because Bailey and Carmella deservingly. They were the main event. And they both deserved to be. And the women's division deserves to be in the main event a lot. For NXT shows. Because they all bust their ass. Except for. Cameron and Eva Marie, I don't see them busting their ass and having great matches with anybody. So Cameron takes on Alexa Bliss. Alexa Bliss had some, I think, some new ring gear. At least it looked new. She was came out the like belly shirt or belly sweater. It was like a Freddy Krueger design. That was pretty funny. I, I even tweeted out, look at. Alexa Bliss wearing a Freddy Krueger sweater. I thought that was funny to just see. 
So this match was, I mean, uh, Alexa Bliss looked great in it. She carried the match. Alexa Bliss, I was really happy she got the win. She hit the sparkle splash for the win. Up next we had, after Alexa Bliss wins, thank God she defeated Cameron because Cameron is god awful. She's a little bit better in the ring than she was two years ago. But still, Carmella, in my opinion, Car not Carmella, Cameron. Cameron. Carmella is a great talent. Cameron is never going to be champion. She's never going to go anywhere on the main roster. Uh, I hope they don't renew Cameron's contract whenever it's up. Hopefully... I don't really wish anybody to lose their job. But hopefully after WrestleMania, Cameron gets released. So I guess I do wish Cameron would get released. Because she's been in WWE long enough. She hasn't improved that much. It's time for Cameron to leave. And it's time for you, Cameron girl, to go by and get out of the WWE. I hope they release you. And maybe some of you that heard me just say that think I'm being too harsh and too mean and too vicious towards Cameron by wishing she gets released well too bad that's how I am sometimes I can be brutal and vicious and I do think Cameron should get released because she's been there long enough and she's not gonna go anywhere She's not going to go anywhere near being in the main event on the main roster or in NXT. So it's time for the Cameron to go girl by and leave the company and get out of the company. Because I don't think she has more than 10 fans. Anyways, hardcore, especially hardcore wrestling fans and hardcore NXT fans would definitely not miss Cameron if she was released. At least I wouldn't. If you're a fan of hers... Okay, good for you. Up next, after Alexa Bliss defeats Cameron, I already said that. I don't want, what, it's times on here, 12 minutes. I don't want to go 25 minutes talking. So up next, we had Enzo and Big Cash backstage promo. They are interrupted by American Alpha. Jason Jordan and Chad Gable, the great, awesome tag team they are. Ready, Willing, and Gable. And Enzo and Big Cash, they share a promo. It's pretty damn great. And then the segment ended. I'm a fan of Enzo Cash and I'm a fan of America Alpha. Both of those teams, either one of them, could win the tag titles and I will be happy. Hopefully one of them win the tag titles at NXT TakeOver Dallas in April. Up next, after the Enzo, Cash, and American Alpha promo, we had another match. And this match was pretty rushed. Uh, a lot of the matches were kind of rushed. Except for the main event. But that's okay. So... They were trying to fit a real, it felt like they were trying to fit a lot into this episode of NXT because it was the first one from the big arena in Orlando. And it was a big show. Crowd was hype for it. You could tell. Samson, Elijah, Samson, whatever his name is, Elijah, Elijah, I don't really care. The guy's boring as hell to me. I saw him live in person. Four weeks ago, I saw Samson live in person. He wrestled Bo, Bo Dempsey. Bo Dempsey's way more entertaining, had way more charisma. Bo, uh, Bo Dempsey got a, a great pop live in person when I was at NXT. Elijah Samson, he got booed out of the building. He was boring. He did nothing. His character, all he did when he came out, all he did was sit on the top rope and just sit there for like five minutes and not move. He was boring as hell. And he's not even that good in the ring. Uh, Samson might get released after WrestleMania. I predict he, he will be released. Even though they're kind of pushing him, I guess. But 
If I was WWE, I'd release Samson. He wins. He defeats former TNA. Excuse me. He Samson defeats former TNA wrestler Jesse Sorenstan. I hope I said his last name wrong. Anyways, former TNA guy broke his neck in TNA, sadly, but I'm happy he's uh, healthy now and he can still wrestle and make a living. So Jesse Sorenstan, or Sorenstin, whatever his name is. The guy's a good talent, good looking guy, but he jobs the Samson. Up next we had an Apollo Crews interview right before the main event. Apollo Crews interview basically talking about his match with Finn Balor last week, which was a damn good match. Very good wrestling match to watch. It was pretty fun. So, up next, the main event is next. Bay Mella, best friends, BFFs, going at it in the main event of NXT Orlando. Carmella comes out first, does her gimmick, getting on the mic saying, I am the princess of Staten Island. How you doing? And I'm the, or I'm the hottest chicken, whatever. I forget how she says it in order. Or bada bing, first she says, bada bing, hottest chick in the ring. She's been doing that for probably two years. That's over. I saw Carmella in person four weeks ago. It was pretty great. I'm glad I got to see her in person because she has a lot of charisma. And she's a pretty good wrestler. She's improving every time I see her on TV. And Carmella in person looked great. She's a very attractive woman. She looked great, and she defeated Alexa Bliss. Back to the main event. Bay Mella going one-on-one -on -one for the NXT Women's Championship. Carmella, as I said, came out first. Did her gimmick on the mic. That's always fun to hear. Crowd was uh, cheering. Carmella got a great pop. A lot of people are fans of hers. And I'm a fan of hers. She's really improved in the ring and... I'm a fan of Carmella. She's gotten better and better every time I've seen her. And she's pretty damn good looking. And her father was a former pro wrestler. And she grew up a big wrestling fan. So I'm a fan of her because of that. And she respects the business. You know she does. And she obviously has learned and picked up wrestling from whoever is training her. She's picked it up pretty well and can work a pretty good match. And Carmella, this was probably Carmella's best match I've ever seen of hers because she was in the ring with Bailey, a great worker. Bailey could carry anybody. I don't know if Bailey could carry Cameron. I doubt it. And I don't think she could pull a good match out of Cameron, but... She did have a decent and okay match with Eva Marie because it was pretty short, but whatever. So, Bailey is so good. She's that damn good, as Triple H used to say, he's that damn good. Well, Bailey is that damn good. She could have a good match with just about any woman on the roster, except Cameron and probably Eva. But I thought Eva against Bailey in December, I think it was, for the championship, I thought it was okay. It wasn't great, it wasn't that good, but it was okay. So Bailey comes out next, gets a huge pop, huge reaction. Bailey is the female John Cena, except she doesn't get booed like Cena does. Bailey is so over. She is a future of the WWE Divas division on the main roster. Bailey is a future of it, and she'll probably be in the WWE for the next 10 to 15 years. She's that damn good. And she's coming in defending the championship. Match starts. It was pretty good in the beginning. Got better and better. A, lot, a couple, a lot of near falls. A lot of uh, crucifixes and the pins. Bailey kept rolling over Carmella in, from the crucifix move. One, two, one, two, kick out, kick out. Great near falls. 
Or Bailey got knocked out of the ring. Carmella did a dive through the second rope. I think the first dive was through the second rope. That was great to see. That was awesome. That was a great spot. I was really impressed that Carmella pulled it off. She does a dive, takes out Bailey with a high cross body. Goes back in the ring, crowd's chanting, crowd's really into it. Crowd is chanting one more time, one more time. Ba Carmella does it again onto Bailey, this time through the bottom rope. She does another dive, takes her out onto the floor. It was awesome, it was great. I loved this match. I loved this episode of NXT from Orlando, from a big arena in Orlando, or decent size arena in Orlando. I loved this main event for the NXT Women's Championship. Why? Because I'm a fan of Bailey. Big, big fan of hers. I respect the hell out of her for what she has become. She has become the number, her and Sasha Banks, in my opinion. Bailey and Sasha are the two best women's wrestlers I've probably ever seen. I mean, there's been a couple others, like, I mean, Asuka is very good. Uh, Sarah Del Rey was very good. I was a big fan of hers when she was in Shimmer as her champion. There's probably, maybe, uh, probably list of the best women's wrestlers I've ever seen is probably five women, or under five. But Bailey and Sasha are on that list. Right now, to me, they are two of the very best. And I'm not going to talk about women on the independents that are probably very good. And women in Shimmer because I don't follow those companies. And I don't follow the indies that much because I don't have time to. I only have time to watch, really, NXT and the WWE and follow TNA and I spend a lot of time watching the WWE Network because I'm an old school fan and I grew up in the uh, Attitude Era when I was a teenager is when the Attitude Era was happening. So I was a big fan of that and WCW Nitro and ECW. So I spend a lot of time watching the network I don't, and I try to watch Ring of Honor every week but some weeks I miss it because I forget it's on but I try to che uh, check out Lucha Underground but I don't get to see it that much because I'm usually too busy and tired or I just don't have time so I follow TNA, WWE NXT and a lot of Ring of Honor so I don't have time to check out Every single great women's wrestler on the independence. I just don't have the time. I would like to, but I don't. And with my free time, I like to spend time with my girlfriend and watch the WWE Network when I'm not with my girlfriend. Even though when I'm with her, I still watch it sometimes. So, as I said, Carmella's two dives on the outside was great. It was very impressive. It was a great spot. The match was great. I'm not going to say it was the best women's match because it wasn't that I've seen in NXT. Sasha and Bailey was the best from TakeOver Brooklyn. But Carmella and Bailey worked a very fun match to watch. I was really into it. I was really entertained. It kept my attention. And I just love watching Carmella and Bailey wrestle each other. It was awesome. Then, uh, they do a couple more near falls. Carmella, I don't know why, I almost forgot her name. Carmella does a, what do they call that? Uh, that freaking move. Hit, not a hit toss. Sunset flip. Carmella rolls up. Bailey in a sunset flip has her pinned. One, two. Then Bailey rolls her over. Is Bailey's on top of her one, two, three, holding her legs one, two, three. Bailey wins and retains the NXT Women's Championship. 
round of applause for Bailey retaining it, even though I wouldn't have been angry if Carmella won. But I did not expect Bailey to lose it. Anyways, I'm sure a lot of fans did not. So, after this, uh, I'm Bailey was still in the ring, Carmella, and then they hugged and embraced. After the match, that's what I wanted to see. I did not want to see Carmella turn on Bailey. I just did not want to see that. I think it's too soon for Carmella to be going to be a heel. It's too soon for that. And I went to enjoy seeing that. It would have actually upset me if Carmella attacked Bailey. I would have upset me because I don't want to see them turn on each other. Maybe they could in the end of the summer. I would be okay with that. But right now, no, they shouldn't. And I don't see Bailey ever turning on Carmella or turning on a friend of hers because I think Bailey is stuck as being a babyface for the rest of her career like Ricky Steamboat was. I just don't see anybody ever booing Bailey. I just don't see that ever happening. Unless you're not a fan of hers, then you can boo her all you want. But I think her character, I think Bailey is stuck being a baby face for life. Just like John Cena is, basically. But in my opinion, Car Bailey is way more entertaining than John Cena. But I, I'm not bashing Cena. Cena fans, I'm not bashing him. I respect the hell out of John Cena and his work work ethic. So, after they hug and embrace, Carmella starts breaking down. She got emotional, cried a little bit. I'm sure she had tears running down her face. Then Carmella goes to the back. Was walking up the aisle and gets attacked and jumped by Eva Marie and Nia Jax. Attack Poor Carmella's laying on the ground in the entranceway, in the aisle, getting attacked. Eva Marie's stomping her, laying, uh, stomping a mud hole in Carmella's ass, basically. And Eva, those kicks of Eva's, I mean, when she was stomping Carmella, that did not look good. Eva has not picked up wrestling very well. Anyways, then they throw, then Bailey shows up, runs down, tries to attack Eva and Nijax, gives a few forearms to Nijax, she breaks it up, and headbuds, vicious, pretty uh, good looking headbud to B Bailey, but knocks Bailey down on her back. Then they pick up. I believe Nijax picks up Carmella, carries her to the ring. That was pretty awesome because May Nijax looked like a killer and a monster. So then they throw her in the ring, and then at, right when they throw her in the ring and they're holding her and still attacking Carmella, Asuka comes out, walks pretty slow to the ring, and stands up on the ring apron. It looked like she wasn't even going to get in the ring. She's just staring a hole through Eva and Nia Jax, she's staring at him. And then, and then Asuka gets in the ring, goes face to face staring, and uh, Carmella's in the middle of them, and Asuka is staring at Nia Jax, Eva Marie is behind her, behind Nia, Eva Marie looks scared to death, and then she taps on Nia and says, let's go, let's get out of here, because... The crowd start chanting, Asuka's gonna kill you, Asuka's gonna kill you, and Asuka will kill you. She is a beast inside that ring. So, uh, Asuka, Nia face off, stare at each other, and did you look at the eyes of Asuka? She looked intense, and she has great, great facials. She just has great expressions. She puts on her face. And I'm really glad Asuka's in NXT because she is great. Really happy uh, Triple H and WWE NXT signed her to work in NXT. Because I don't, Asuka, I don't think would work on the main roster right now. She's way better off in NXT. Her character belongs in NXT. 
because that's where they really wrestle. And, of course, Charlotte is a champion. She's a great worker, great wrestler. Nothing against Charlotte, Becky, or Sasha on the main roster, or Natty, or Paige. They're great workers. But Asuka, in my opinion, her character should stay in NXT for a while, if not the entire year. So, after... Uh, Bailey gets back in the ring, holding her championship, checking on Carmella. Then Bailey and Asuka face off, and this was fucking great. I loved seeing them face off because it is teasing. Basically, NXT is teasing that we're gonna have a Bailey versus Asuka match at NXT Takeover Dallas, and I have heard a lot of rumors that they have that match planned for the NXT Women's Championship already. Bailey versus Asuka is already booked for NXT TakeOver Dallas. Very happy to hear that. And I really hope it happens. And my uh, NXT fantasy booking show that I did over a month ago. I did in Jan I think early January. Anyways, it's called the fantasy booking of NXT stars Finn Ballard, Asuka, and Emma. In that show, in my fantasy booking of NXT stars Asuka, Ballard, and Emma, I, did, I say in there and discuss that I wanted to see, and I, I booked Bailey against Asuka at NXT TakeOver Dallas. I booked that match for the title, and I have Asuka going over and winning the championship. And then I have Asuka going right into a feud with Emma over the title for three months into the summer. And then I have Emma against Asuka in a two out of three falls match for NXT Brooklyn in the summer of 2016. So, final thoughts on this episode of NXT Orlando. It was really good. It was very entertaining. Went by very fast. The entire flow of the show was great. The entire booking was great. That is how you put on a wrestling show. WWE, Vince McMahon, who's ever booking WWE, and you should watch NXT and learn from NXT how to put on a good wrestling show that's entertaining. Because I would way rather watch what we saw on NXT tonight. I'd watch that any day over Raw or SmackDown. So, this ends my NXT Orlando review. Hope you enjoyed it. Tonight's episode was very entertaining, very good. I really enjoyed it. It was probably the best episode since, in my opinion, since NXT TakeOver London. Tonight was is almost as good as that. But it was a lot shorter. It was only one hour long. And TakeOver London was over two hours. So, hope you enjoyed my review. Follow me on Twitter at TNA WWE Guy and at NXT WWE Guy. NXT was great tonight. Final rating, I would give it... Or, yeah, final rating, 1 to 10, I'd give it a... 8. It was very good. It gets an 8 from me. Bye for now, everybody.